invites you back to the sex of summer, and then invites you back to the employee. But we don't stop helping you with your career there. Once you finish and you get a job offer, we actually link you up to our alumni, and your coaches are still in touch with you. And we want you to be successful, so we stay in touch with you to help you through our alumni ambassadors and our, and our um, mentors that are throughout those corporations. How many of you have heard of ERGs or BRGs, employee research groups? An employee research group are those affinity groups inside corporate America that are African American, Hispanic, Asian Pacific Islanders, LGBT, and other affinity groups that corporations allow to be able to foster good mentorship and strategies on how African Americans or Hispanics will do in that company. Well, we partner with them to make sure you're getting the mentorship that you need to as well. Not only that, we want you to get to the C-suite and the board room. Our focus is to get you as high in the organization as possible. And then all we ask you to do is to just reach back and help those behind you, or those who are next to you, or even those in some places in front of you. You see our process, and the Inroads Advantage also delivers salary internships. So when you come to Inroads, all of our internships are paid. You come for the summer, Based on the marketplace, corporation pays you an internship fee for the summer. Okay? And then we're the largest. So when you get these kinds of development curriculums, we are sure when you come out on the other side, you're going to be ready. With that in mind, we have proof. We have proof to say that not only if we do it right, you study academically, you work hard, you're a leader on campus and you go and you knock that internship out of the ballpark, we've got data to show that we are there when you get your job opportunity. And so according to NACE, the National Association of Colleges and, and Employers, 74% of inroads graduates receive a full-time offer from inroads corporate partners. We beat NACE, and we also beat the national average. And then, 12% higher than the national average for for-profit salary internship programs. We're not satisfied with that. We want to be 100%. So we continue to work at getting even better. But these rates, even the 29% higher than the rate for the government paid internships, we're better. So if you want the real evidence to show, not only are we getting opportunities, but we're also getting jobs. And in the graduates, at a conversion rate, that means a hiring offer. They give you an offer, a job, uh, and a career we beat, basically, the national average. That's evidence. That's evidence, folks, that it works. But we can't get it done alone. We need the partnership and the collaboration of fine institutions like Florida Union University and the School of Business and Industry, uh, which are great team, and the vision of how collaboration is better than anything else. And we're here to partner with you to support that effort and vision SBI as it was established by Dean Marlin years ago. And I'll never forget her. About the third time she shook my hand, I was saying, yes, yes, yes. And so I followed that creed that Dean Marlin has taught me, even though I wasn't a student here, about anything is possible. And now in the hands and in the legacy starting out um, with Dean Trout, I can't tell you in better hands than her and her faculty. And so you're in great shape. You're getting the advantages that you need to have. Now, you must take the next step. You must first wake up, if you are asleep. Secondly, be prepared to take action now and early. Don't wait. April's too late. December's too late. So when you go home for Thanksgiving and mom and dad says, what are you doing next summer? You're already ready for the question. Got it? It's important. That you do it early, you do it long. So with that in mind, I'll share with you, and somebody said in the class today, how do you compare with other programs that may do what you want to do? There is no comparison. And I'm confident about that because our process has been around for years doing the same thing and doing it well and excellent. In Rose has served more than a thousand corporate partners throughout those 40 years. We have, and we lead the market with over 230 corporate partners. 
nationally and regionally. The Florida Blues, Cal Frank, they're right in Florida. Pepsi, Lockheed Martin, and others that are right here. So we know we've got evidence that makes it real. And more importantly, we can reach it just about anywhere. So if you're from Enum, Wisconsin, and if you're from Pocono, and if you're from uh, Pompano, all the way to uh, Pahokee, we got you covered. We know where you are. And that goes to California, too. So we not only have offices, but we're virtual as well, just get on our website. With that in mind, let me just share with you why you want to understand where you're headed in the marketplace. And so you take some things away from you. And so the National Association of Colleges and Educators, um, employers, produces data each year that talks about the top hiring industries and who they are and where they are in services. So if you're thinking about what your major is going to do for you, you think about what you're going to do for your major. And you think about where your opportunities are. So the latest report, 2012, there's going to be a 5 to 8 percent growth in internship growth. What does that mean? That means that corporations in certain industries are hiring again. If they're hiring interns at the pipeline, they're certainly hiring people in the middle as well at entry level. Majors in demand, engineering, business, accounting, computer science, economics, physical sciences, communication, social sciences, humanities, agriculture, health science, and education. I go over all these so that you understand that sometimes the game plan changes. But that's okay. But I'm sharing with you that there's opportunity. And the key skill sets for new college hires consist with inroads training. We basically know this because we're talking to the employers. So we know what their demands are. Your verbal communications are just as much as important as your written. Decision making, problem solving. That's not just saying, I wonder, you know, how are we going to keep, um, go from staying open to 5 o'clock, servicing on our website to uh, midnight. That's an easy one. But you're going to get very complex issues, and we want you to be able to handle problem solving, processing of information, planning and organizing, prioritizing work, and analyzing data. So I've shared with you what the market trends are and what's out there. But did you also know how long it will take you to find a job after college graduation? Four to six months. So after all the graduation gifts of the bathroom, especially those gift cards, mm -hmm. if you've gone through the Applebee's and the American Express gift cards and the Visa gift cards at graduation, money's out. Four to six months. Not only that, how many resumes a hiring manager will receive for each job posting? This is why you want the advantage. This is why you want to stand out. This is why you want to be unique in your ability. They'll go to 300 to 500 resumes. At some point, they'll be going like this. Right? You're asking yourself, how do I stand out on my resume? You've got to have an advantage. And it's about the inroads and the SBI advantage. That's what you've got to have. So pay attention. Don't, don't take it lightly. And more than anything else, I go to bed every night thinking, what am I doing differently that I need to do better? to ensure that if I want this vision to happen right, that if the complexion of America today in corporate America and senior executives would be really diverse and inclusive, these numbers would exist. But guess what? I've got to have the pipeline to get there. Do I have 233 women in the room right now? Help me out. Do I? If you're a woman raising your please. Okay. I need you in this number. I need you in this number. Okay, men. All right, folks. Come on. I need you for any of these numbers. So it's important for you to know we are looking for you. And when I wake up in the morning, I just want to know that I've been to a place where I guess we got to know that this is going to come true. With that in mind, Let's talk a little bit about who's eligible, but I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time on the slide because all of our managers will be available today to really be able to help you. There'll be some information at the end. But I'll provide these slides to faculty so you can share on 
whatever means of communication you can for um, if you want to be eligible for it. Um, With that in mind, the Ambro's internship, the process is laid out, and when you get to a point where you talk to yourself, so I think I'm ready, apply. Our servant core leadership conferences are important because employers told us they want you to be day one ready. They don't want you to sort of in the parking lot and say, I guess I'm going this door. I guess I'm going that door. I guess I'm going this door. But they do definitely don't want you um, misunderstanding on how to greet a reception in a corporate environment. They want you ready. And the leadership conferences come in place to include value and diversity. Not only that, we need your commitment. We need you to stay abreast to what's going on and what it takes to be an inroad. Again, you'll get all this information. I'm not going to walk you through every specific point of it, but there'll be information this afternoon um, that we'll share with you where you can find this information. With that in mind, the question most often comes up, will I receive a job offer? I showed the statistics, but I do want you to know if you work hard and you want it, and you have to go to win, you'll be provided an opportunity. With that in mind, we know it because we survey our, our interns. We ask them, what do you think of the process? Well, nearly 90% said we believe in those training is making them better, a better leader. Above 90% said they made a difference in their life. 95% said they think they'd be the best in the class. That's coming from the interns, not us. And so we know, as we position this, all you have to do is write this information down for contact. And then we're going to have a session later this afternoon um, so that you can attend to so answer some questions for your director. With that in mind, I want to get you an opportunity for you to ask some questions. So I want to wrap up by I asked, I told the forum today that I would have some time to give my feedback on my personal wisdom about what I can share with you to help you. Well, it starts with this. What comes to mind when you see this slide? Anybody? Just throw out an answer. It's not a part of your formal testing as you ask the question right. Just throw out an answer. What was that? Scorpion? What else? Danger? What else? Persistent? What else? What about death? Give me that one. Well, first of all, you heard the old adage, what doesn't make you stronger, what doesn't kill you will make you stronger. Right. You heard the old adage? How many heard it from you? And who did you hear from you? Your mommy and dad? I know you right. I'm, I'm sure I heard it too, many, many times. As the belt was striking. <laughs> okay. But the bottom line is, this is also transforming. You see, this is the death stalker. This is the deathliest scorpion in the world. If you get stung by this scorpion, the obituary is already written before you get to the funeral home. You're dead. You're gone. That's right. Don't call for help. Be like round zero nine one one. <laughs> but researchers at New York Presbyterian University Medical School have found a way that the venom in the tail has something secret. I'll share it with you later. But I'm from a small town in the southeast of this great state of Florida called Fort Pierce, St. Lucie County. And from that town, it's famously known for the final resting place was Zora Neale Houston, which you should all know at some point. If you don't, what a fantastic writer, but more so an innovative woman in our history. Now, I grew up in a fun life. When my sister finally figures out the showing us over the state of Florida, she won't kill me. But that's okay. I grew up in a fun life because all we did during the day, during the summers, is that we would have our opportunity to play together as brother and sister. We were only one year apart, and our birthday was just one month apart, 
So my, my mom did it for Costco birthday. You're only one year apart, you're only one month apart from your birthday, you share the same cake, and you have one birthday in this house. You know? And so I, we grew up sharing everything. To include when we had a lot of fun during the day, we would grab a bag of oranges, because we lived in the projects. And we lived in the old projects. And the difference between the old projects and new projects was that the windows, you had to wind them out and wind them in. But the new projects had one air conditioning unit, and typically it was in the parents' room. And mom wouldn't let you in that room very often, but you had the rain cool off and right out, rain and cool off and right out, going to South Florida. But the fun days when my sister and I would climb up on the roof of the project with a bag of oranges just before sundown for entertainment. And we would peel those oranges open, begin to eat, and we would watch a movie. Because we lived right across the canal bank from the drive-in movie. <laughs> <laughs> we could not understand a thing, but we could see the movie. Let me tell you something. We had a lot of fun. And then the games of dreaming would become. And that's how I got the projects by dreaming. And those games of dreaming, I'm sure you all have played it. My sister would always jump first. But when I grow up, I'm going to be this, I'm going to be that. And we got an opportunity to see a lot. But she would start off by saying, when I grow up, I'm going to be an astronaut, and I'm going out of space. I'm going to be the first girl in outer space. I said, OK. When I grow up, I'm going to be the first African American in outer space with a Miami Dolphin helmet on. <laughs> she would go, when I grow up, I'm going to be the first girl in outer space, be an astronaut, and I'm carrying my Barbie doll with me. And I go, no, you're not. She goes, yes, I am. I go, no, you're not. She goes, why? I said, because I pulled the head off before we came up there. <laughs> <laughs> and she goes, oh, ah. anyway. So to that end, yeah, I know we let your questions. So I'm going to give it up in a minute. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to go to sleep. But behind us was our real dream, simply because we could see a spaceship going up out of space in Cape Canaveral because we live behind it. 20 miles through And when we saw that, we really began to dream. And that led me on my journey to leave Florida after a high school football accident on uh, a cast on my leg. And the only transportation I have is a very on bus going to Morgan State. And when I got there, it led me on a journey to get to corporate America. And when I got there, I began thinking of things that were going to make me successful. And my mentors paid it for me, all 125 of my mentors. Because I got 125 mentors in my life. Because I always needed help. And I'm not ashamed to ask. But I remembered this. And I want you to remember. If you want to reach for a goal, you must see the reaching first. It's like Tiger Woods when he does a putt. It's like Michael Jordan when he makes a foul shot. It's all there. But you've got to see the reaching. And if I love you with anything, it's about reaching inside, reaching out, and reach back. Just because you're in college doesn't mean that you can't do this. And it reminds me of the great statement that says, if a man is not faithful to his own individuality,